image is one of my all-time favorite images. It's a satellite picture of the Earth taken at night by NASA satellites. And to me, it's a testament to human innovation that even after the sun goes down, we humans have found a way to light up our world. But more than that, this picture is actually a map of the world's energy usage. Because you can see where there's large populations or where there's big cities, it shows up brighter on this map. So you see, the US is quite bright, particularly on those two coasts, and Europe's pretty bright, and China and India, they're pretty bright too. But here's the thing, China and India should actually be a whole lot brighter given their population densities. And we know in the coming decades, as the world's population continues to rise, but even more importantly, as developing nations decide that they want a standard of living similar to what we have in the US, this map is gonna get brighter and the world's energy demands are going to continue to increase. And in fact, we know that worldwide energy consumption is going to increase 33% by the year 2040. That's just 20 years from now. We have to find one third more energy than we have today. So this is interesting. How do we get our energy today? Well, across the world, we primarily rely on three main sources of energy. They are coal, oil, and natural gas. But what are coal, oil, and natural gas? Well, they are fossil fuels. And what that means is fossil fuels come from organic material, so dead dinosaurs, dead plants buried deep down in the earth over millions of years and pressurized to turn into this form of fuel that we can dig up today and burn for energy. But here's the thing. We are currently using about 10,000 years worth of fossil fuel every single year. So it's not difficult to imagine that we will soon run out. But more urgent than that, more importantly, is that fossil fuels contribute to something you guys are all familiar with, global warming, right? Climate change. Because when you burn these types of fossil fuels, what gets released is carbon into the atmosphere. And we've all seen the devastating fires that occurred here in California in the past few years, the fires that are still going on in Australia, the glaciers that are melting at the North Pole. Climate change is an urgent, important issue for my generation and even more importantly for yours. But we know energy usage is going up and that's not necessarily a bad thing because energy usage is directly related to increasing standards of livings for humans across the world. And we want everybody to have a good life, right? So instead, maybe we should look for other forms of energy. Well, what else is there? Well, it turns out that sometimes the solution is right in front of us. What if we could harness the power of the sun? And I'm not talking about solar energy. What if we could generate miniature stars here on Earth and harness that energy? What I'm talking about is fusion, the same reaction that powers the sun. The idea behind fusion is actually very simple. What we're gonna do is take a very light element, hydrogen is the lightest, and in fact, we're gonna take two isotopes of hydrogen, heavy hydrogen, deuterium and tritium. We're gonna slam them together by getting them very dense and very hot, and they're gonna fuse. And what comes out on the other side is a helium nucleus and a neutron and a huge amount of energy. How does this actually work? Well, if you take your initial reactants, your deuterium and tritium, and you weigh them, they weigh a certain amount. After the fusion reaction, if you look at the products, they actually weigh a little bit less. And that differential in mass goes into an equation that you all know very well. E equals mc squared, where m is mass, c is the speed of light squared, and we all know how fast light travels. So even if you start with a tiny bit of mass, you get a huge amount of energy out. That is the power of fusion energy. But where do we get our fuel for fusion? Where do we get hydrogen? Well, it turns out water, H2O. 
Water really is the fuel of life. And in fact, in seawater, deuterium, one of those reactants that we need, is naturally occurring at one in every 10,000 particles. The tritium, we have decades of experience in breeding that from lithium, so we know how to get that too. And the cool thing is, you don't even need that much uh, fuel at all, because fusion fuel is powerful. One single pound of fusion fuel is equivalent to the amount of energy that you have in 5,000 barrels of oil, which is actually equal to three and a half million pounds of coal. So what would you have, rather have? Three and a half million pounds of this dirty, dirty coal or a single pound of clean fusion fuel? And in fact, fusion energy is attractive for many reasons. First of all, it's safe. In order to start your fusion reaction, you first need to provide energy into the system to get your, uh, your atoms to fuse. So if you ever want to stop a fusion reaction, you can cut off that initial energy source. It's not like fission or today's standard nuclear power plants where you have to worry about runaway. It's sustainable. We know how to obtain the energy we need, the fuel that we need, without damaging the environment. Base load. It's envisioned that fusion power plants would be equivalent to today's gigawatt coal power plants, capable of feeding cities the size of San Francisco. There's no geologic storage. There's no high-level nuclear waste. It's completely carbon-free. The only byproduct that we have is helium. And we know helium's safe. You can suck a helium balloon and you're fine. You have a little bit of fun. And finally, energy security. If we can demonstrate fusion to be a viable energy source, no longer will the U.S. be reliant on foreign oil imports. But where's the sun is a million miles across. What we're going to do is build miniature stars on the order of two one-thousandths of an inch. That's about half the diameter of a human hair. And to do that, we go to the National Ignition Facility at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. The NIF is the world's largest, most energetic laser just in your backyard. And in fact, the NIF is a building the size of three football fields side by side, 10 stories tall. And housed inside is 192 separate lasers, each one alone, one of the most energetic in the world. And what we're going to do with these 192 ginormous lasers is focus all of that laser energy down on that tiny target shown on the bottom left. What you see there is a little gold canister that we call a hole rom. It's a German word for empty space. There's holes on either end that we're going to bring the lasers into. And right in the middle, that you can't see in this picture, sits a little fuel pellet, two millimeters in diameter, two millimeters, holding our deuterium-tritium fusion fuel. So, I know this is a little bit hard to envision, so let me play a quick video for you to show you how it all comes together. Shot director, ready for shot. So we start here, in the NIF control room. Down for shot on my this is where I, on as mark. an experimental Clock physicist, spend my time when it's Five, my experiment. Four, three, two, one, shot. So the laser is going to be born here in the master oscillator room. It starts as a fiber laser at nanojoule level, so about a thousand times less energy than in a typical laser pointer. The laser is going to be shaped in time and split 48 ways into a pre-amplifier module where it bounces around several hundred getting amplified up to the millijoule level. And then each laser is split another four times and goes into the main amplifier chain. It bounces back and forth across the facility four times, getting amplified to the kilojoule level. So in all, the lasers are amplified a million, billion times up in energy. At this point, each of the lasers is about a square. That's 40 centimeters by 40 centimeters. The reason the lasers have to be so big is that they contain so much energy that we 
energy out than we put in with the lasers. And that's the name of the game of fusion. image of what that target chamber looks like. Um, that blue ball is about 30 feet in diameter. Um, you see the lasers, those square ports coming in from the top. Those are the lasers that are coming in from the top. You can't see the lasers coming in from the bottom. And anything that isn't a laser, or sorry, or isn't one of these square ports is basically a diagnostic, an instrument that we use to measure the conditions that we achieved inside the fusion fuel. And my job as an experimental laser physicist is to actually come up with some of these instruments instruments that can measure up to 50 billion frames per second, measure extreme densities and temperatures similar to what we have inside giant planets and stars. And as a fun side note, if this looks familiar to you, um, the NIF target chamber uh, was actually the uh, scene uh, in uh, the Star Trek Into Darkness movie from 2013. Our uh, target area was the warp core for the Starship Enterprise. And so, how close are we to this dream of fusion energy? Well, if we think of the challenge of fusion as a mountain that we have to climb, well, before the NIF was built, we were standing at the base of this mountain, 10,000 feet away from the top. In 2009, when the NIF turned on and we did our first experiments, we found out that we were 100 feet away from the top. We still had to couple 100 times more energy into the system than we were at that time. By 2012, we were 10x away from the top. And by 2015, we were getting a lot closer, just three feet away from the top of the mountain. And by 2017, we were just two feet away, and that's where we are today. But the top of the mountain is covered in clouds, and we, it's incredibly steep, and we really don't know the best path that we have to take to get there. And so that's our job at Lawrence Livermore, and hopefully some of you guys can join us in the future, to get to that dream of more energy out than we put in with the lasers and harnessing fusion energy. So I'll leave you with this, that harnessing fusion energy the same energy that powers the sun and the stars is the answer to meeting the urgent energy needs of humankind. Thank you. <laughs>